concussions. I've had more than 19 concussions. 19 that I know of. There's this marker on your brain, it's called tau protein. It's a marker for CTE. And they tell me you've got it and you're on your own. One of the things we've been working on here at PAST are protocols to reverse or lessen the symptoms that are related to post-concussion issues. Since 2000, Terry's lived in garages, lived in an animal hospital. I, I'm not even sure exactly sometimes. I don't like to depend on anybody, so I'll put my head where, where I can. It does feel like my husband was taken away from me. But the more I'm finding out about concussions and brain damage in the NFL and possibly um, having some effect on these guys, it makes sense. I played nine years NFL. I played on the 81 49ers Super Bowl team. Joe Montana, right here, right over here we have Ronnie Lott, and there I am right here, number 50. When the NFL draft started, and he went as high as he did in the draft, everybody uh, was so happy, especially in the Samoan community, because he was one of the first Samoans to blaze through that, that trail to the NFL and, and had people take note. former UCLA Bruin. Football, right? it's a good game. There's um, many facets to it. The only bad part about football is concussion. No such thing as a mild concussion. Terry Titolo is still down. I guarantee you he's uh, very anxious to get back in there. He's a fierce co competitor and tough, tenacious hitter. We always had really nice times. And then slowly things changed. He would get angry, it seemed sometimes out of nowhere. And it, it got very violent. The, the isolation, he would go in the garage and I wouldn't see him for hours and hours and hours. My husband was becoming increasingly unfamiliar. The kids were always on guard. And finally, they said, Mom, he's got to go or we're, we're going to move out. I was homeless for a couple of years. That was my fault through my broken marriages. Uh, but don't want to be where I'm not wanted, so. You know, it's not onset of early Alzheimer's, I'm sure. It has to something to do with the brain injuries in the NFL. When I was playing football, there, there are some things that I, I wouldn't do back, back then if I knew. But that's for everybody. If they knew this is what they were dealt, they wouldn't do it either. But you can't change time in a... That was a stupid choice, but... Hmm. So Terry was put on our radar by another player, Brent Boyd, who had been past getting some treatment for his post-concussion issues. 
Terry and Brent played together at UCLA on the 76 Rose Bowl team. One of the historic upsets of all time, UCLA team who won going away. Terry was their star linebacker, and there was a lot of talk amongst the UCLA team members about Terry, and they had heard that he had fallen on hard times. So Brent, in essence, sort of became the mouthpiece for this entire team that was expressing concern for Terry. We got Terry to agree to come to past, and I think one of the main reasons was we figured out a way to bring him in at the same time we were able to bring Brent Boyd in. And the kind of cool thing is that this will be the first time in 30 years that these guys have seen each other. What's up, buddy? Hey, Brent. How you doing, man? Good. Good seeing you. You too. <laughs> you look great. How was the flight? Oh, it was long. Get on in here. Man, you look different without that big fro from 1975, God, man. Well, that's not, this is a fro. <laughs> it is, isn't it? You're good. Well, I'm just glad they took me on. It's like a little, a little family here. Yeah. Let's go one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm disabled. Yeah. In my conversations with Terry's family, it's emerged that, that Terry is using meth. One of the biggest challenges we're going to have is getting Terry to admit to the fact that he is using methamphetamines. Hey! Oh, how are you? Long time no see. Yeah. <laughs> Great. You look good. Hey. When you recruited someone else, I see. This is Hi, Terry. Terry. This is Terry. I am Jen. So nice to finally meet you. To Terry. Yeah. The only thing that's kind of, I think, real important is that you be as like open and honest and like just download as much information to us as you can. It's a long way from Long Beach to here. Right. So better for you that you think of everything that you can, no matter how insignificant you may think it is. It may not be so insignificant. It might be something that easily we can deal with. Tell all. Tell all. Terry, Ray Lucas, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So what, you just your first day here today? Yeah, this is the first. Everybody's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's going to be surprised how much stuff goes on here. Mm. I'll find out. Yo, quick, fast, and in a hurry, you're going to find out. It's all good. Part of the diagnostic process we go through at PASS is a brain scan, especially in those players that report having any type of post-concussion issues. You're having some concussion-like symptoms? Yeah. There is something right here. Um, this is the globus pallidus. It's a little, there's two little punctate dots right here. Yeah. It could be a manifestation of tiny punctate hemorrhages that occurred in the brain at some point in time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Well, linebacker, linebacker brain. Jean Merlino played football at West Point, sustained a total of 13 concussions. I have this uh, sponge head or like a fog head. It just wears on you and it just doesn't go away. I wake up every morning and I go, please don't. And I open my eyes and there it is again. I found him in the garage and I thought he was going to hang himself. It's like he doesn't even see me. It's like this deadness. 